Judge, today's case is Alpha Man. She's young, she's scared, and he's controlling. Let's see if I can get through to this self-proclaimed alpha male. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toler presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Mark Santel and Angelina Uno Peak. The two of you have been together for two years, uh, but you do not want to be together anymore. Mr. Santel, you are suing Ms. Uno Peak for $800 for the cost of a cell phone, and we will get to that momentarily. But before we do, Ms. Uno Peak, I'm going to speak with you first. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here today? Well, Your Honor, Mark always tried to call the shots, but he can't afford to be the boss because I'm the one that makes all the money. <laughs> I go to work from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m., and the first thing I do is I hand him everything I made that night. Right when I get home, he tells me he wants a massage. He's so controlling that he made me give our daughter up for adoption. She said, he said it was him or her, and I chose him. Wow. Oh, my. I can't even How have How long ago was that? Well, she's nine months, so it was about nine months ago. Nine months ago. How did that conversation go? Well... What did you say, Mr. Santel? Well, what did I you mean, say? It sounds bad by, yes, by it the does. way she's saying it. But, I mean, at the time, we were both homeless, right? We, we, we were living at a friend's house. Uh-huh. And, like, I didn't have a job. She didn't have a job. I mean... She was she she had run away from home and everything. Like we we didn't we you didn't we have in, anything. We were in a position to have a baby. Right. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I'm controlling, but for a reason. You feel me? Because if I let her do certain things, it's gonna come back and bite me in the ass. Like she talking about I don't let her out, right? But if I let her out, every time she come back, she come back with a story. Like for you're example, you're on a he, you're on a. I don't you don't let her out. <laughs> when, when, I, when, I, when she when, when I let her out, she always come back with a story. Like for example. Oh, she, I let her out with her friends, right? It was three girls and three guys, right? Two of her friends walked off with two guys and left her in the car with the guy, right? Guy touching on her, trying to, you know, have sex with her and everything. Right. Right, I had to come back and find out about that. Your Honor, he's lying. I found out he was dating a prostitute the whole time I was pregnant. I was not dating a prostitute. He was paying her for her hotel room and everything. And he didn't tell me. I found, I just found this out. I feel like... All right, so she was gone when she was pregnant. The, the entire course of her pregnancy, she was in a program. And so I feel like everything that happened in that period of time is like a gray area. Because when she left, she gave me permission to go do things with other girls because I didn't know how long she was going to be gone. And she loves to get on her high horse about, oh, I did this with this girl when, I, when she was pregnant. But that whole time, she was in a relationship with a guy in the program with her. She loves to blame me for everything, but she, she be doing the same stuff. You feel me? Mizuno Peak, even with Adam, do you think you make good decisions? Yes, I think I make good decisions with Adam. There's just a list of rules that I have to follow um, every single day when I'm with him. What's the list of rules? Do we have them? Mark's rules of order. Yeah. I am the alpha male and I will be respected as such as all the time. You didn't really do that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> she I mean, made that up just to entertain me, right? I mean, I, I am the alpha in, in, in the house. Just because I feel like she can't make good decisions on her own. She don't got the skills to. She talking about finances. If I didn't control the money, she would blow all Your our Honor, money on stupid true. stuff. I got, but we would be broke that's if not I let her true. control I, the money. I received three thousand dollars from my from one of my family members, and I asked him if I could get a forty dollar piercing. And you and made he that said, she said, made that deal. He said she I could get it if he got me. a twenty six hundred dollar bike. That was her and idea. And he decided to do it. He he went he went along with it. He did you did get it. a twenty six hundred dollar bike? She, all right. Y'all just thinking, fresh off the street trying I, to make it, and you got a $2,600 bike, because, and you mad at her because she made a, wanted a $40 piercing? I mean, you didn't, need the, not, you didn't need either one of those things, but, oh, Lord, how stupid is that? Because I have been wanting a bike. I have been wanting a bike for a while. So I want a yacht. I don't go out and buy one. But, but she, but she, she knew that. Like, so? So she, she made a deal with me. If I let her get a piercing, she let me get a bike. But you say you make good decisions. You're blaming her well, that was for the... No, 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 stop, I'm talking. I said, you said you make good decisions and that she doesn't. And you're claiming that getting a $2,600 bike in your financial circumstance was a good decision. And I'm saying, that ain't. Well, it didn't, it, we didn't spend any of the money that we were getting from our incomes. It was just the extra money that we had... There is no for. extra money. You're 19. You don't have any extra money. <laughs> you don't have a home. You know what I mean? You were just off the street. You don't have extra money. 
You she, hear me? She be, waste, she be wasting money, too. If I no, give her... No, uh-uh, uh-uh. You the alpha male. You answer for what you do. <laughs> no, you cannot open your own bank account. No, you cannot go out without my permission. Did you say all of that? Yeah, and like I said, if I, if I let her out, she always come back with a story. Mm -hmm. Do not go to sleep until I'm ready for bed. We must be on the same schedule and be equally tired. And like, do not that's, purchase, she, I am talking, Mr. Santel. Do not purchase foods that I don't eat. Do not buy fruits and vegetables. It's a waste of money. <laughs> I, will, what, I let her. I, I let her get. I, I, I just the other day when I went to a grocery store, right, like like a month ago, uh, I had bought lettuce and apples and everything. I see, one of those apples. Right, two of them still sitting in the fridge right now. The That's lettuce that true. I bought, moldy. I had to throw it. I had to throw it out <laughs> before. I well, why don't you eat those apples? <laughs> I don't. I don't, I don't really eat fruits. fruits or vegetables. You might need to start. <laughs> <laughs> Wash the dishes immediately after you cook before you eat. Your phone privileges will be taken if you abuse your phone. Do not get guys' numbers at work. Do not purchase clothes without my permission. Did you say all of those things? Well, if she, if I, if I let her just have money, she's gonna go to the store and blow it all on clothes or ice cream or or a twenty six hundred dollar buy. That's not true. That was That's actually, not true. That was actually what you still think that makes sense, don't you? Well, I, I feel like because it didn't like affect our ability to pay bills, so it wasn't like you know. Yeah, what I'm it saying? did. It didn't. It didn't it affect did. our. It didn't affect our ability to pay yeah, bills. Yeah, but it's my money. It's you my made money. She made the deal. It was her idea. It wasn't my idea. She was like, if you yeah, want to get it, but you know what? Right. You see, you say you're the alpha male, but as soon as it, I call you on a decision that's bad, you claim it was her decision, and you made a deal. So since she made the deal, it was a good decision. You see what I'm saying there? You see how much trouble you in here, Mr. Santel? Do you get that part? You see how this thing's gonna go for you? <laughs> Say something that will make me like you. <laughs> Anything. Say something positive. Say something about how kind you are, what you do for your woman, or, or how you make anything better. He was nice enough to let me have 10% of my money so I could buy something for his birthday. <laughs> Did you do that, Mr. Santel? It's not just that. If she make ones, I let her keep the ones. I mean, I don't, I don't want a pocket full of ones. She, she, she a stripper. So I, I, don't, I don't want all, of, all them ones in my pocket. Your Honor, one day I had given him my money and he had spent it all and threw it all on a stripper that same It was night. like $5. She, exa she exaggerated, bro. It was like $5. Say something that will make me like you. <laughs> Anything. Say something positive. Say something about how kind you are, what you do for your woman, or, or how you make anything better. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, always, I'm always there for her. She need me. You know what I'm saying? In what respect? She needed to get her GED. She, she didn't finish high school. I didn't finish high school either. But I had got my GED. And I was, I had pushed her to get her GED. You know, I was with her when she was doing the practice tests and everything and, and helping her study and everything. She got her GED, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm, or, I'm happy. That's a good one. That, that, that was a very good one. Did he, he help you get your GED? Yes, he did, Your Honor. Why do you stay with him? Because I love him. Oh, that. <laughs> if you weren't with him, what do you think you'd be doing? I'd probably be... Honestly, I don't know. I'd probably be in a bad place. You say she's always trying to make you jealous. What do you mean by that? I, so, like, if we get into a fight, She'll so start talking to guys on the dating app. Mm -hmm. Or um, one time for Valentine's Day, right, I spent the whole day with her. But at night, I wanted to go out to the club, like to the club with my friends or whatever. Mm -hmm. So she got mad. So she. You're 19. What kind of club can you get into? <laughs> I, just, I just paid a bounce. But it's, it's straight. Like, all right, so she, <laughs> she went out. She, so I had went out to the club with my friends, and then I came back. Find out she had went out with this guy off of her Snapchat or whatever. 
they they was hanging out, or whatever. Ended up like kissing or something on Valentine's Day. And she she be doing stuff like that all the time. Like she be doing things just just to make me mad. Ms. Yeah. Uno, Ms. Uno Peak, did you do that? Well, I did, but at the end of the day, I've only been with him this whole relationship. I never slept with anybody else, and he has. But every time she Who has he slept with? How many people has he slept with? He slept with at least 10 people. She lied. At she least. She lied. It was, like, it was like three people. or four. Three no, or he, four he, people. Why is it OK for you to sleep with three or four people, but she can't go out on a date with one? It was because she, like, every time that like, happened, she was gone. And she had told me before she left that I could. That's she was not gone true. for nine months. That yes, is not did. true. That's yet, not she true. She told me I could That's before not she true. left. Can I, let me ask you this, Mizuno Peak. Do you have family? Do you have do you have people that are in your corner? I have family, but But are they in your corner? Not really. So he's kind of like the default dude? Well, yeah, I love him now. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. I'm worried about you. I'm concerned. When you I'm say do, do your part, what do you mean by do your part? He what, what? Too. He I mean, all right, so art. right now I'm not working, so I'm, I'm basically taking care of the house. When I was working and she wasn't, I expected her to take care of the house. And right? that wasn't happening. And that wasn't happening. <laughs> and I was the one cooking, cleaning everything. She didn't do nothing but stay in bed all day. Were you in bed a lot? Yes, I was. I was. Are you OK? Yes, I'm OK. I'm worried about you. I'm concerned. Do you ever worry about her? I mean, sometimes. You see, you, you seem to be annoyed by her behavior, but do you ever worry about why it is she stays in bed all day? It's not normal for an 18-year-old. I, I know her background, so like. Her background is probably not the best. I don't think people took good care of her. Is that true? Yeah. Ms. Uno Peak, what do you want him to do? I want to know how I can make this OK for you. You see, she's crying there, right? Do you know why? Um. No. Nah. You don't know why? I mean, I didn't say anything. I was a lie or bad about her. It, it, it got nothing to do with you. That's not why she's crying. Not crying because you did something mean to her. She's crying because she's sticking with a dude that's trying to be all alpha male, this, that, and the other. And she feels like she doesn't have any options or any power. She's crying because she's hurt. She's crying because she doesn't feel safe. She's crying because she's scared. That's why she's crying. What would you like him to change if I could get him to change one thing? I would want him to put me first. Think about me. Like, sometimes he'd be saying stuff and, like, it what hurts What kind of me. things does he say? Like, I know the other day I said I wanted, I said I wanted a belly piercing and he told me that I was Fat, so, and it's just like I did not tell you. I did he not did tell, tell me that, what and he's told me that many times. Bro, I, all right. First of all, I like I used to joke around with her, like you know, like when somebody eat up everything out of the kitchen, you say they being a fat ass. Outside, that was that was a joke. I wasn't literally calling her fat. I, you it can't was, joke it was with like, women about their weight. Period. End of story. I understand that now, so that's why I don't do it no more. You feel right. me? Right. Like, I, but what I, did you say the other day when she said she wanted a belly piercing? I, so, so I said if she wanted to wear a belly piercing, she should just, like, work out so that she could look her best in it. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Well, I, it wasn't meant to hurt her. It was meant to, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I hear you. <coughs> I hear you. You're young. Uh, so I'm going to give you a second on that one. Never tell a woman she, her body ain't right. And You know what I mean? Just don't do it. It, it, it doesn't feel good. Mr. Santel, I don't think you're a bad guy. I don't think you're a particularly mature guy. 
I don't think that you are as together as you believe you are. I believe you love her. But I also believe that you're selfish and immature mm -hmm. and that you have a great deal of obligation on your shoulders. Ms. Uno Peak has been through some things. I don't know what they are, but I know they were there. You know what they are, I don't, but I can tell. And she's broken into pieces. And if you're gonna take on somebody who's broken into pieces, you can't continue to kick her. When you tell her she needs to work out because she's too chubby, you kick her. When you tell her she can't go here and can't go there and do this, that, and the other, you kick her. It's about being a warm, comforting, cherishing uh, person to a person who's already had a lot of bad things happen to her. And if you can't be that guy, you need to become that guy, because she deserves that guy. Yeah. Are you with me? I feel you. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Mizuno Peak, I think you are an absolutely beautiful young lady. You're young, you've been through a lot, and the, and, and, and the only thing I'm quite sure of is you survived in one piece. And here you are, beautiful, working, doing your thing, and I'm so proud of you for that. You do not have to take, take orders from anybody. I want you to stop focusing on what's happening with your body, with piercings and all that kind of stuff, and focus on your future, your education, what you need to get done. Because, you know, as dark as life may have been so far, it can be bright and beautiful for a long time to come. Now, having said that, I'm gonna say this. I ain't giving him any money. Not happening. You working, he not working, not giving him a dime. Anyway, y'all not leaving each other. But what I am going to do is I'm going to hook you up with a psychiatrist who will work with you on an ongoing basis to help you get your center strong. And it's not going to be just after the show, but you're going to have access to her on a continuing basis because I want you to be somebody. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't want to, you to feel like you have to take orders and rules from a guy who doesn't quite have his stuff together yet. I want you to have your stuff together on your own. Are you going to, uh, uh, if I give you access to that for free, will you take it? Yes, I would, Your Honor. Yeah, because I see great things for you. It's just a matter of you reaching out and touching them. You with me? Yes, I am. Be a better person. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't. Don't. <laughs> you see the difference? There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. Good luck to you, sweetie. Okay. Everything's gonna be fine. You've got all the power in the world because you're young and you're smart and you're beautiful. And, and you know, tell him when to step off. You eat your vegetables and fruit just like you like it. <laughs> Don't let him tell you what to eat and do. You hear me? Yeah. I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know whether to like you or not. I'm kind of, kind of falling for you a bit, <laughs> but I'm not sure why. Judge, today's case is not my baby. They've got 20 years together, five years married, nine children among them. She says two of them are his. He says he don't believe it. I know the answer to all of it. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with DeAndre Walton and Patrice Walton. Mr. and Mrs. Walton, you've been together for 20 years, married for five years. You have two children together, or so you believe. You also have a number of children by other people. Uh, you are not quite sure that the children are yours, so we have a DNA test here that I will reveal the results of. In addition, Mr. Walton, you say Mrs. Walton owes you $2,000 for the damage she did to your house 
while you were in jail, and we'll talk about that momentarily. But before we do, Mrs. Walton, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and why we're here today? Your Honor, we've been together for 20 years and on and off. In between those 20 years, he's cheated. We have nine ch children that aren't are together, but two that are together, and he's not claiming either one of them. Is that pretty much how you see it? No, ma'am. Uh, what's going on is I claim the one, my one If son, you don't claim one, I, you're not going to claim now. The other one I don't claim because at the time that the baby was conceived, we were, like, Where was we at? We, we slept Where in the same at? house. Hang on! We slept in the same house in different rooms. So? I barely was at home. So? And, and when he came in the house, if he crept in my room in the bed, what'd he do? Go to sleep. <laughs> you a dad? Why do you say he's been cheating on you all he along? Tell me some stories that you... I got multiple stories. One day, I went to get my daughter from work. This fool go called me from work, knowing I'm on my way to pick my daughter up from work. He was at the store with a hoe. That, knowing that, that I was on my way to work to pick up my daughter from work, so he that, knew I was gonna be there. That isn't true. So she was at the store. She was getting ready to go to a store so to pick, pick up her daughter, daughter up at and he that was in store. With one of his... And you were in that store yes, with another woman that she yes, knows you mess with. That's what yes, she said, Miss Walton. That's I do not I'm... need a choir. I got you. That was... <laughs> That's not what happened. The girl who I was with wasn't a, a girl that I was messing with. It was a friend of mine. Girlfriend. A I friend of his that he was just hey, in Memphis hey, Mrs. Mrs. Walton, you're going to have to learn to contain yourself. Go I ahead. I took her to the store to buy her a desk for the shop that we was, uh, me and her uh, significant other had together. And she just came, happened to pop up at the... Well, I didn't know that she was coming he to lied. the one at that time because usually her daughter get off at 8, it was 10 o'clock, so... He lied. Right. You didn't, didn't think she would have been there. Yeah. He, he right. knew better. Right. He knew what else can you? Out. What else can you tell me about Mrs. Um, Walton? While he was incarcerated, he had me go through his phone to get some phone numbers. That's While I was life. in that same phone, I found footage, a video of a female in my living room bent over. Ooh. In that same phone, he had text messages from females talking about they was pregnant. M M Mr. Walton did all those... I have... Oh, Lord, well, let me see. <laughs> this is a screenshot of the video of the girl bent over. A mom. screenshot yes, of the video of yes, the girl bent... Uh-oh. Yes, ma'am. The shot neck. Now I know. Do you know what we're talking right about? I yeah, I know what she's talking about. Oh, okay. About. He lied and I'm said... I'm scared of luck. Yes, ma'am, you should be. <laughs> you should be scared. <laughs> Mr. Walton! <laughs> it's me. <laughs> How did that happen? <clears throat> I mean, she want to present evidence. I have a whole lot of, um... I want to talk about the picture I just saw. <laughs> It ain't no getting around that picture. I mean, it I was... mean to tell, tell you. you told me. <laughs> it was a... Tell her the lie you told me. She what said, did you tell her? I told her the truth. She, what she was the truth? Me, I was taking the video, but no, it wasn't the woman that I was messing he with. Lied. It was he lied. He was on it the couch. It was How me. do you judge me? Now stop, stop, stop. How do you take a video it was me like two, that? It was me and he two lying. of my friends was there. He lying. And it was a girl who, me off who, he lying. who's a, a exotic dancer, and she would just he lying. basically in my living room, some bent stuff over. together for. Ain't nothing exotic about that. That's your <laughs> past. <laughs> That's what she Holy was doing. cow! Mrs. Walton, what do you claim he said to you by way of explanation? It was a female his friend talked to. His friend wasn't there. It was him and her. He on the couch sitting down recording her. And when he was done recording, he told her to come here. And it cut off. In my living room. That's pretty suspect, Mr. Walton. Anyway. I don't know. You say he engraved the word bitch yes, in your car. Yes, ma'am. Tell me what the circumstances were surrounding that. Because he can't just let stuff go. He got a tit for tat. So when he was in Walmart with the girl, I got mad and when they, before they pulled off, I hit his, review, his side mirror and it cracked. So, but... So there's your handiwork. Is that your handiwork, Mr. Wa Mr. Walton? I didn't... I didn't that's my driver. Door. He's a lie. I had somebody do it, but I... Judge yeah, Lynn. Yeah. <laughs> Judge Lynn. Not only did he carve the word bitch, he tore up my driver's side mirror. But he replaced it a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago. But, yeah, he did that. But you he destroyed that his himself. mirror first. I did. But he can't tit for tat. He got to go above and beyond the call. 
So tit for tat. So you would have been okay if yeah, you just destroyed mirror, your but, mirror too. Yep, because I but, understand. But the but the word in yeah. the car was too far. He yeah, he worse than a regular female. I, I thought I was the woman. When I was leaving with the kids, he got mad, took the speakers out the car, the radio out the car. This was the envoy. The speakers out the car, the radios out the car, and then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. I don't even know what happened. Because when he get mad, he just act like he's... Oh, my God. What, you, what you're laughing about is you think she, he responds like a woman yes, to his Yes, I'm stereo. trying not to say the word that's engraved in that court. Yeah. That's how he acts. Yeah. That's how uh, he acts. Want... Mr. Walton, why don't you explain to me why you took the speakers out of her car? I don't even... Honestly, I didn't even remember that until she just brought it up now. But... <laughs> Did you do it? Yeah, I took them out. That was mine. I took everything that belonged. I, that's because I think we was... You know how they go, and you be like, ah, oh, well, we at the end, we not... We done, we, we through. We I'm gonna take all my stuff out of there. I took all my stuff out of there. there. And go on about your business with your car. Let's say I'm hiding behind that wall over there, and every day you come by and I pop when you go around that wall. Pop. One day you go around that wall, I don't hit you. You still gonna flinch. You keep pop, 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 popping a woman with cheating. She's gonna flinch every time you move. Okay, why don't you tell me about the time you lied to him about the car accident? Oh, man. Uh -huh. Yeah, come on. <laughs> it wasn't nothing. Me and my older two kids took the trash out. The car door was still open, so the dumpster went with us when I pulled off. <laughs> I just didn't know the door was still open. Did the door come off? Or? No, it just left like a little dent in the side of the car. Uh -huh. I just told him one Why of his... did you lie about it? Because don't nobody be wanting to hear his mouth. Then she also, she didn't mention that she brought the rearview mirror the first. That was the first time she brought the rearview mirror. What first? What, what you talking When you hit the dumpster, when she hit the dumpster with the car. I didn't. The when first I hit time, the dumpster with the car, there was not. She brought that, the rearview mirror. The mirror, mirror got broke on the garage going into the garage. My, my question is, hey, 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 about the stop side it, of the door. Stop it. My question is this: yeah, People have. See, act, uh, hey, stop. Okay, yes, ma'am. Do you hear me? I'm not in the mood today. <laughs> People have accidents. Why would you lie about it? It's, it? it's an honest error. Because you want her to end of it with him. He keep it going and going. He don't know how to let go. Do, would you get mad because she had a... She made a mistake and, yep. and, and dented or hurt the car? No, I just... Been he like, loved him cars more than, than he loved me, so yes, ma'am, he lying. I would be like, he let them cause more. She never wanted. She never wanted to pay for it. She he brought lying. the mirror. She brought the mirror. I guess she brought the mirror the same day she had the accident, and with the door, because I went out to get in the car, and I'm like, how my mirror get broke? She and then she I came told in the house. How and the the, mirror got she broke, came and in the house and laid down. Then say, I see if I she told came him. in the house. Would you stop interrupting yep. that man? She came, she came in the house and laid down. She came in the house and laid down, never said nothing about the car. So it's a difference if you came in the house and said something about it. You didn't say nothing about it. It's, it was to my surprise that I get up to leave and look at my mirror. I'm like, how the car get, how, how the, the door didn't it, the, the mirror hanging, just dribbling <laughs> right. all, 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 along the side of the door. Right. And I'm like, what happened to the car? Ah, oh, you must have did that last night when you came <laughs> in. I'm like, well, I wasn't even driving that car. We had four cars at the time. I wasn't even driving the car. So how would I break a mirror and I'm not even driving that car? The car I'm driving still in the garage. She just... Was it worth it? It Did you have any less of an argument because of it? No, he's still going on. He would have still been going on if it... He had still been talking about it if he didn't know what happened to that car. Because them cars are more important than anything else. Why do you say the cars are more because important than anything else? Because he fixed them cars up. Them his babies. It's a car right now he wish he still had. Uh-huh. He just loved his but what's cars. wrong with a guy enjoying his cars? Tell him to enjoy his family instead of the cars and the females. Oh, my God. What? Mr. Don't Walton, do you admit that you've been, been traveling a bit while you were married to her or with her, that you dip with other women here yeah, and there? I, I, admit, I admit to that. And... Is it been ongoing the entire 20 years? No, nah, it ain't been ongoing the whole time. Regardless of anything that go on with me and her, I take care of my kids, and I always he been a good care. father and to I my kids. And I tell you, he is a good father, but when it comes to me, he is no good. He is a good father. What about me? Mm -hmm. You see how her chin is? Yeah. 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 I was her too. Doing. But well, me, here's, what here's what I'm going, going to do. So you honestly don't believe that one of those kids is yours? Yeah. Really? 
How can you look at that face and not treat it as well as you look at the other ones? So he think I'm supposed to sit around and wait on him? No, I'm not gonna wait. But when I had this last baby, I wasn't doing nothing. But he is swerving down saying, is he doing something? I'm doing it. That's not the case. I know how to stop. He don't. You see how hurt she is? Yeah, I was hurt too when I shit up her phone at her relative house and seen a message from her and another guy talking about how she was dreaming about having Understanding how often you've cheated, though. Huh. Why? Would you not? I wouldn't cheat. Why were you so especially hurt about that? I you know what I mean? Because, because he think I'm supposed to. You a but you had cheated earlier. No, nah, not, he not, lying, not before then. I he lying. When we first got married, I, would, I wasn't cheating. Ms. Walton, I'm a, let, let, let me ask you this. And I, I want you to, to lay back and open your mind wide like a prairie. <laughs> he has cheated on you, no doubt about it. It, it, it's, it's foul and despicable. It hurts people in a way that you, it, it dishonors them. It's a constant all-day lie. It's not just the sex, it's the, it's the betrayal, it's the holding another woman above you because she knows what's going on, but she doesn't know what's going on. Do you understand the depth of that kind of hurt when you cheat on your wife? Yeah. Do you understand it? Do you understand why it drives her to be an angry woman? Let's say I'm hiding behind that wall over there, and every day you come by and I pop! when you go around that wall, pop! Go around that wall, pop! Go around that wall. One day you go around that wall, I don't hit you. You still gonna flinch. You keep pop, 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 <laughs> popping a woman with cheating? She's gonna flinch every time you move. She ain't no saint herself. She ain't had a, she ain't did her own infidelity. She ain't Well, had, tell me about that. Okay, the first time, the first time she cheated on me is with the guy who I was telling you about where they was testing each other and she was telling the guy about she been dreaming about having, making love and doing all this I didn't tell him that, I told stuff. you that. She been dreaming. I didn't tell him that, a, I told you that. It was in the that. test message you were, she was telling the man that she that. I got that, about. we heard that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> make it make sense, Stop. tell the truth. What she was dreaming about. And you know that. I don't know what she was it, doing. But well, here's, what here's what I'm gonna do. So you honestly don't believe that one of those kids is yours? Yeah. Really? How can you look at that face and not treat it as well as you look at the other ones? I don't, I mean, I don't, I just don't, I ain't gonna say I don't do nothing. I really just don't be paying what she be talking about, all the extra stuff with the baby. He don't, don't interact mind. with Draylon like he do with anybody else. I don't know which kid is which, <laughs> but it don't matter, because <laughs> they're both yours. Don't you feel small? Watch that foot, baby. I know you're upset, but just, just hang on, hang in there with me. Don't you feel small and silly? Don't you, not thinking all the, of all the times in your mind where you plucked him out or didn't quite love him or didn't quite pay attention to him, didn't quite give him all of you because you didn't believe that he was yours. Think about that and, 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 and feel small for a moment. Just feel it. That baby did nothing to you other than be yours. Mm -hmm. And you let your insecurities <laughs> deny him the full measure of your love, which apparently, when it comes to your children, is quite a bit. That you love your children well, but you denied him that. You got anything you won't say to anybody in here? Just pick somebody and say something. <laughs> I'm not going to ask. Just go ahead. I apologize for not accepting Draylon since he's my son. Mr. Walton, you want $2,000 for the damage oh, you shit. say she did to your house while you were in jail. Please oh, explain man. that to me. Oh my God, I don't even want, I don't know where to start. The day that How I How long came, were you gone? Seven months. Okay. In seven months, it looked like I was gone so, for seven years. So? I came home from jail, the whole house was destroyed. The, look, they, how you break the metal part from the ceiling fan? The, <laughs> I paid, I paid $300 for my living room blinds. The, all of the yeah, broken in half. I had a 70, look, I ain't not a closet door on there, closet door. It's a whole, it's body prints of holes in the wall. Mm. It's just, 
It's un it's Did you take a picture of the hole you put in the bedroom wall door? A hole in you the wall. You ain't take a picture of the bedroom door. You put the that hole in the Miss Walton, Miss oh, Walton, okay. let me ask you this. Did you tear up the house while the man was incarcerated? I just didn't care. Excuse me? Because after I went through the phone, I didn't care. And after I went through the phone, I emailed him through JPay and told him I was leaving after I found this stuff in his phone. So, no, uh, I did not care. And speaking of JPay, uh, uh, what recently what occurred is I was just... Um, she just filed for bankruptcy. Okay. Is this a lie? I was in jail for Don't seven months, me. not nope. in seven didn't months. You just, can't, you just can't contain she yourself, can you? She didn't put a dime of money on the phone, I mean, on the, on the books or anything for me for the whole seven months I was incarcerated. She I know. Let, let, let me tell you why she didn't put nothing on your books. Because you, you ain't any knives in her heart. Mm -hmm. It's hard to go hard for a dude who's mm -hmm. hurt you that often. No, 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 no. I'm all done. I'm all... You're all done talking. Now it's my turn to talk. It's hard to keep showing up for somebody who keeps hurting you. It just is. And you gone, she's at home, got nine children. Nine children. Nine children. Nine. And she decided she didn't care. She didn't clean up. She didn't do right. One of the kids tore up the fan. whoop de doo It's not... It, I am not going to give her... Give you any money from her for tearing up your house. The kids tore up the house. She just didn't clean it up. This I want to say to you, Mrs. Walton, don't carry his hurt with you. I want you to be in a position where you can, you can love and be happy and unhurt and feel good, and you got to lay down whatever issues you have with him, because it's over now. He is a part of your past. He's right. going to be a part of your present to the extent that he's going to continue to parent those children in the loving, honoring way that you always have. And you will never, ever, never, ever make it difficult for him to do that. You could see him walking down the street with 97 naked women. <laughs> and you should say, hey, what's happening when you're coming by to see the kids? He'll tell you 5 o'clock, you'll say, see you then, and you keep walking. The best revenge is living well, and that's what I'll ask you to do. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. So tell me how you're feeling now that he knows that this baby is his. Mad, because we shouldn't have had to go through this. Well, you relieved now, at least that... I didn't need no relief. He needed it. All right, man, you found out that that baby is yours. You think you'll be able to step up in that department? Hey, I always anything for my kids. And now what's next for you? Huh? I'm just glad this whole situation that we I'm going on about my life. Wish you the best. Yep. Good luck. See you. Judge, today's case is cash only. I have a couple here who have been together for 20 years. They've gotten through a whole lot of big stuff, and now they're getting tripped up by the little stuff. Let me see if I can help them out. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Carl Berry and Candace Berry. Mr. and Mrs. Berry, you have been together for 20 years, married for 18. You do not have any children together, and you don't want to be married anymore. Mr. Berry, you are seeking reimbursement for $400. You say you laid out to fix one of of your wife's friend's cars, and we're going to talk about that momentarily. But before we do, Mrs. Berry, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here today? First of all, Your Honor, we're here today because I have to charge my husband $200 to have sex with him so that I'm motivated because he wants to have a community penis. Oh! <laughs> That's the kind of thing we're in for today, Nick. <laughs> we are in trouble. Already. In trouble. He has community <coughs> situation. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you charge him $200 per? That's a discount. <laughs> he gets the family his discount. Mr. M Mr. Barry, does she really charge you? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. 
<laughs> but it's, it's just almost like a, a circumstantial situation because she doesn't make as much money as I do, so this feeds her need to spend. Mm -hmm. That's how she gets her extra money. Mm -hmm. She says it's because you make your way around town a lot. Uh, around town a lot. Yeah, her motivation has to be something other than love because you spread yours around too no, much. No, I've changed my ways. Okay. I've done that. Not I've, true. Okay. I've proven myself. I've moved us. I've paid for everything. I've got off of social media. I've done everything necessary. And to still today, I still get blamed for it. What about how the long? Line? Hang on. Sorry. How long ago... Did, did, the, did the philandering stop? About two years now. Two years now. After 20, <laughs> though, you know, that's a lot to get on. See what I'm, I'm just saying? saying. Yeah, I see so, what Go ahead. Basically, it's not a thing about that. It's like, okay, an example. Mr. Carl lost his phone, and a good Samaritan was calling the numbers back in the phone to try to get the sure. phone back. So he was at work. And I had to go pick up the phone, right? Okay, you know I'm a woman. I'm nosy. Yes, I am. I'm just going to say, open up the phone. And what's the first thing I see? It's my naked husband <gasps> on a picture that he ain't... I ain't want the picture. Your Honor. But he sent the picture to somewhere, somewhere in the world. And this was like... It, it hurt me. How long ago was that? That was about two... two, three years ago. With your mid forty year old self, you take it <laughs> make it pictures <laughs> of yourself and got it on the phone, sending it to people. Is this what I'm hearing? Yes, ma'am. But I and, and what is the purpose of that? <laughs> it was the need for attention because she did not have time, too much time for me. Mm -hmm. That's how we all got into the predicament in the first place. Because she takes trips, she goes with her friends, and she's the one that comes home two, four, six o'clock no, in the morning. No, 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 wrong, wrong. First of all, I don't. I do take trips with my friends only because he don't want to go nowhere with me. So we do uh, little girls trips every now and again. Mm -hmm. But he is the one that's working. He's the one that's always busy or whatever. And if I'm... I, we don't have children together, mm -hmm. okay? We have pets. But if I want to take time to go kick it with my friends and wind down, his dinner's done, his house is clean, everything is taken care of. And another thing, another thing, he talking about I don't have time or attention for him, he has a 30-minute rule. What is that? <laughs> 30 minutes after he get home from work, I'm not allowed to talk, request, or ask him anything. So if I have a situation going on, I got to sit there with a time clock, almost, looking <laughs> stupid. What? But when I come... Now it's different, because when I come home from work, I got to start cooking dinner. I got to start... I, and then he'll ask me to do something else. What about my 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. Your Honor, I... Do you have a 30-minute rule? Yes, respectfully. Yeah. But... Does she get the same amount of quiet time when she comes home from work? Somewhat. What? No, that's a no. Mr. Mr. Barry, that's a no. I work 12 to 15 hours a day at one job, and mm. then on other days, I work my second job, and then on third, on Saturday and Sunday, it all depends on what's going on, I have to work again. But I just have to separate myself from my job in order to not take my frustrations from my job out on my wife. I ask for... Decompression time. time. Right. It don't matter, because he's still going to explode on me. If he, if he get into a road rage incident on the street and he come home, he mad at me like I did something, like I was driving the other car or something. And I'm at I've home waiting on him that. for 30 minutes. I've been working on that. Do you have a rage problem in general, Mr. Barry? Well, it all stems yes. from an incident that happened when I was a child and I've been having 20, almost 30 years of psychotherapy in order to deal with it. And I'm trying to really manage having that and talking with her and dealing with other people. But, yeah, I run a couple people off the road a couple times. And that's... And, that, and whatever happened to you still haunts you. I can hear it in your voice. I can hear it in your voice. Let us all be aware of how we treat our children. Because... Uh, and, and who's around our children and what's happening to our children. Because they carry that nonsense with them. I don't want to know what happened, and I'm not gonna ask because you didn't volunteer it. But I'm going on behalf of society. I am so sorry, and uh, I'm glad that you are receiving psychotherapy. You might want to adjust what you're doing, maybe another kind, because you know, 
There are different ways to get to the issue and, and, and tease it out because you can't be riding people off the road. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't be riding people off the road. But, I, but I'm sorry. His money is y'all's money. Yours money is your money. And you chip in when you want to. You got to own that. You okay. really got to own that. <laughs> What is your main issue with her? I can trust her, but I can't trust her. She's the one that comes home two, four, six in the morning. Uh, she has excuse me. Let, let him finish. Spending habits. Spending her, habits. Spending habits. Give me, give me a, 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 an example that would outrage me. <laughs> I tell her no more shopping, mm -hmm. no more for food because the freezers are full, no more clothes because her clothes room, which is like 12 by 8, is totally maxed out. Totally maxed out to where I don't want to see it because I get angry because I'm a neat freak. Mm -hmm. And then her total, total need of money on a continuous basis, I don't mind, I have it, I'll give it. But it's just not to overwhelm me. Mm -hmm. Are you spending a lot of money and collecting a lot of clothes? No, ma'am. First of all, yes, I do like clothes and shoes, <laughs> as every woman probably in the world does. Not me. And, you know, I have to have stuff in different sizes just in case I gain a little or lose a little and, you know, all the in-between. But I give stuff away, and if I do buy something, I make room by giving it away. Mm -hmm. and, and... Do you spend a lot, though? No. I'm always on a budget. Everything that I do, I do it on a budget. And if I do ask him for money, it's for specific things needed for the house because I work, too. Right. And I figure he pays all the bills, and he can take care of that part, and every I do everything in between. And sometimes well, I fall well, short. How do you how do you contribute financially to the house if he pays all the bills? Well, I buy make sure the laundry stuff, the the food, uh, everything everything in the house, the dog food, the cat food, his deodorant, his underwear. So his you socks. you buy you you buy. Uh, he wouldn't even have and... underwear if I didn't buy him because he won't buy nothing. He's cheap. Yeah. That's why I leave the door open for money for her. Mm -hmm. He's but cheap. It's just a point but he that... gives you money when you ask for it, doesn't he? Not all the time. But most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. And you got your own job. Yes. And he's paying all the household bills. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes. You see I... help. I'm, sometimes I might jump in and pay the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so you know how wrong that, that is. is. be like, no, but then I'll buy something set. His money is y'all's money. Yours money is your money. And you, trip in when, you chip in when you want to. You got to own that. Uh -huh. yeah. You okay. really got to own that. <laughs> <laughs> you say he never wants to spend time with you. What, why do you say that? I say because he works a lot, Your Honor. Yes, he does. But if he has a second... He will occupy that second with helping a friend, fixing somebody's raggedy car that he don't even really fix because it, it needs to be buried, but he's going <laughs> to waste our time. Example, there was, um, there's a jazz uh, in the park. There was a jazz in the park this summer. Mm -hmm. Free concerts, six weeks. We went the first one, and I was like, we should make this a day. It, ain't, it don't take no money to spend. I make you a sandwich, pack a lunch, you know, a little mm -hmm. wine, and go out, listen to the jazz with our blanket and chill. He was good for, like, one time, maybe twice. But every other time, he would act like he mad at me so we don't have to go, and he's sitting in the house twiddling his thumbs, talking about what's for dinner. <laughs> and I want to go to the park. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Barry, what, what, what do you have to say about the park? I can do some. I was raised in Detroit, which is humongous. Mm -hmm. That's all I've seen all my life is a lot of people. And I've moved to a small town for a small reason. Not that many people. So me dealing with work and it's me dealing with hundreds of people it's just coming a park. In, And then I have to come home and I don't have my half an hour. And she continuously wants to get straight on to whatever it is. I have no break time in order to break myself down in order to adjust myself to get in these circumstances. I got you. Who cleans the steps it's from the bottom work. step? Sweetheart, or... work with gravity, not against it. <laughs> Tell me about her micromanaging. Oh, mm. When I come home, I tend to work for myself since I put so much time in for other people. She comes and she has to have things in particular ways. Like, the cleaning has to be done in a particular way. Right Just way. Just like the incident to where we was grilling right and cooking stop, stop. together. 
she would come out and she would make sure that I have the grilled meat on this side. This side is cool. Make sure that the hamburgers was done and done right. And it was, and then it's, it's continuous. It's Your nonstop. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Just even last night, I couldn't do anything but make her happy in order for us to have a good evening. It's like she wanted a salad when they were out of salad at one part of the bar. She lied. It wasn't no out of place. salad. She lied to me and told me they didn't have salad. This is why I almost can't take her anywhere. Gotcha. But you. That's Ms. not true. Ms. Barry, wait a minute. She, she was lying about the salad. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> but we're going to go. Let's back it up for okay. a minute. The micromanager. All right. First of all, he is smart, OK? This man can read a book about a car and fix it. But he can't tell you what seasoning go on chicken. So <laughs> me being the woman that I am, <laughs> I have to step in and take control to help guide him in the right way. Because if I see him making a mistake or doing something wrong that's going to hurt him down the line, what's wrong with me trying to help him? But you're right. Why don't he trust me and listen to my word? I'm never going to steer him wrong. He talking about a grill. You seeing that's Patty. He taught micromanaging of a grill. It's only one way to cook chicken till it's done in a certain temperature. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> it ain't no other way. I got you. I get, that's true, because you make people sick. Yeah, and he the main one with stuff going on with his stomach. So he think I'm trying to be micromanaging, mm -hmm. but I'm saving his life. Give me other examples of micromanaging that she does. Cleaning the house. Yes. Yeah. It has to be done in a certain way. Yeah. Who, who cleans the steps from the bottom word. step? That's... <laughs> who cleans the steps from the bottom steps? You know how you sweeping the steps up? Right. Who vacuums from... Don't you vacuum from the top to the bottom so when you go, you don't touch and shred dirt on... But if you're doing it from the, the bottom, every time you're just taking dirt up the damn steps. <laughs> Excuse me, the steps. So what's wrong with saying, sweetheart? Or... Work with gravity, not against it. <laughs> You missing the good stuff, fussing about the small stuff. But anyway, you want four hundred dollars from her. Tell her, tell, I tell me why. I will not pay you. If I order you oh. to, you will. Okay. <laughs> if you Mr. Say Barry, no, Mr. Barry, why do you want four hundred dollars? I was from doing her. Uh, repairs on her friend's car that she wanted to sell that was sitting. So I said, I don't mind. I'll put money into it as long as you pay me my money back. Well, she was micromanaging the deal. So she was in it. So she was halfway in it. So after they got through with their part and I got the vehicle and I got it fixed and got it back to them, before I could turn around and look at anything, I'm out of money, the car's gone, and she don't want to talk about did it. Did you promise to take care of the, the no, money of the I car that not. your friend... No, I did not. I'm going to tell you what happened. What had happened was <laughs> he, working on people's raggedy cars... Start like it's gonna need this, that, or the third, and all my job was to, was to convey that information to her, what he said the first time. Now I'm not a mechanic, so I don't know what's gonna happen when you open that hood and get in there, and it's gonna be more. Well, she budgeted her money out to what he said the first time. She wasn't anticipating it. I wasn't anticipating it, I and it. I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> so the uh, the cost that he incurred was at his own. Yeah, I understand. You see or, what I'm or, saying? Or if he needs because to get... My thing is, and that's from that... I learned from that deal, like, that's what I've learned. Mm. I'm not a mechanic, so I can't say, oh, he gonna charge this for that. But if he tells me that's what he gonna charge and he goes back in and it's more, how is it my fault? Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. Mrs. Barry, Mr. Barry is not perfect, but he's still wonderful. And if you lose this man, you will be kicking yourself for the rest of your life. I know he was tacky, trifling, tired, and wrong for years for cheating on you. He took a good woman's love and he ripped it up and he kicked it around and it wasn't right and now you got some feelings about it as you well deserve to have. Here's the thing I say about that. If you stayed with him through all the cheating, but leave him now that he's acting right, it's like going to work all month long and then not accepting the check at the end of the day.
He acting a fool. You chasing him or whatever. That is. And now he acting right, and you still have this re- anger and resentment, and you can't enjoy the fruits of your labor. And you labored to stay with him. That's number one. Number two, I know he's got a temper. He got issues. He's working on his issues. A lot of people don't bother to do that. And I think that he's a very bright guy. Bright people are weird. (laughs) He is weird, Your Honor. You know what I mean? But he's hardworking, and if he needs a little peace at the end of the day, 30 minutes ain't much to ask. He didn't want to go to the park at all. He went two times out of six. That's what that is. Everything is a give and take and all this kind of stuff. I just don't want you to miss the check after you put in the work. That's all. That's all. What I'm going to say to you is this. Remember what I told you about the manner in which you are able to direct your anger. You've made decisions about whom with whom you will be angry. And she is one of the people to whom you believe you can express your dismay. You need to put her on that other list. You would do anything to save your life or make money, but you wouldn't hit an old lady on her head and take her her check, because it's on that list. Having said that, that man picks up a rag, a vacuum, a mop after 12 hours a day, and then they... Let him clean the way he want to. (laughs) I mean, I gotta say... Who cares? He's paying all the bills. He lets you have all your money. It's your money. You know, and he don't want to... Police. (laughs) Let him clean the way he wants to. You know what I mean? He's cleaning. Good Lord of mercy. And he does not have to know how to season no chicken. (laughs) There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. All right, so I just got to ask. Will you stop charging the man for sex? Maybe not. I like money. <laughs> 30 minutes. We'll see. Yeah. You know, no seasoning. All right. <laughs> little things, right? Yeah. Work with me. Work with, work I'm with each other. I'm going to try to work with him. All right. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Judge. Today's case, all in the family. It was a package deal. A man marries a woman with five children, and we all know what happens next. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Jakina Mitchell and Devante Jenkins. Ms. Mitchell and Mr. Jenkins, the two of you have been together for three years, married for one. You have one one one-month-old together. You have five children from previous relationships, and you have one child from a previous relationship. You do not want to be together anymore. Uh, Ms. Mitchell, you are seeking $400 for an unpaid loan, and we're going to talk about that momentarily. But before we do, Mr. Jenkins, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about re- this relationship and why we're here in divorce court today? Well, Your Honor, um, I understand that when you marry a woman with that many kids, they become a package deal. Because um, she had five kids when you got married, correct? Yeah, she had five. And uh, I, I guess they not so respectful, in a sense. So, for an example, um, I think we got a picture up here. Uh, before and after of the okay. bathroom I did. What happened with the bathroom? I went to Home Depot. Okay, I see. That's the before. Yeah. You and went to um, Home Depot, and what'd you do? Uh, went to Home Depot, I bought oh, paint. Oh, very nice. That's the remodel I did. Uh-huh. Uh, went to Home Depot, bought my money, my right. own money, no, no maintenance work. Mm-hmm. Nobody paid for this. Right up under the bathroom, I mean, with this, the toilet at? Yeah. It's a toilet roll. Right. You know, we do uh, number one, number two. Well, I get well. And, and stuff. So, Obviously. Uh, I did a, I was doing, doing my thing. And um, I look and I see the word B. Sp- like written. B-I-T-C-H? B-I-T-C-H. Up under this hard work I just did in this bathroom. Right. Oh, so it was like written on the side yeah, of the, it was of written, the counter? Like, written right up under the tissue roll. So I it was got like, you. If you pull it, you can always always I, see. I, I got, got you. you. Just wanted to see it. So who do you think did it? I mean, I, I know you think it's one of the kids. Do you know which one you think did it? Don't name um, them. Just tell me I if do. you think you know. I do, but 
I Ms. Mitchell, do you think you know which one of the kids did Oh, I'm pretty sure I know who did <laughs> what is done. What is the issue there? Is there an issue there with him and your kids? Right. Well, we're a package deal, Judge. Right, Let me right. just say that. He signed up for this. He knew what the deal was when he when he dropped in my inbox and asked me if I if knew asked me where I was mm -hmm. about cookies. So anyway, yeah, the cookies. So let oh, me okay. let me start from the beginning. We were on we were friends on Facebook. However, it was skeptical to me. I think he was just trolling. Someone I know, I he trolling. knows. <laughs> you you probably was, I was trolling. Hey, let, let, let it finish. I wasn't trolling. I was creeping, but I wasn't. Trolling. That's the same thing. <laughs> oh, okay. But anyway, okay. is there a difference between creeping and trolling? Yeah. Is I mean, it? I let seen, me know. I'm just trying to learn. Hold up. I seen, I seen her on my page. Uh huh. She had a nice little dress on. All right. So were you just creeping in the end? Yeah, I just I hit gotcha. add, and she jumped in my DM. Okay. I did? Okay. I still yeah. have them. My so let's get said. past that, because you yeah. ended up getting together. So anyway, he jumped in my DMs, or I jumped in, it don't matter, we together. Anyhow, he met me when he pulled up on me that night. We talked, he knew how many kids I had had, or whatever have you, and he knew what, what the deal was. So anyways, he took us to Virginia Beach, a family vacation on during spring break. I was away from him. He felt like my damn, my, the kids, he always blamed everything on the kids. My being disrespectful is the fact that what took us away from each other, in other words. So, meaning, he was a, he was like walking ahead and we were behind. And he felt like I give this, my older kids, a little more attention than I do him and the smaller kids, which isn't true. So we got back to the hotel room. He addressed it, that issue as far as like being by myself and us not being as a family and, you know, just walking collectively. I felt like it wasn't a big deal. I'm walking slow, I'm pushing the stroller. It's Virginia Beach during springtime, a bunch of old people and families just walking around. Mm -hmm. So of course I couldn't keep up. Yeah. So with that being said, the word B, going back to the disrespect, the mm -hmm. word B, I know who wrote on the wall. I didn't know. You, you, okay. All you had to do was ask. Let, let, me, let, me, let, let me ask you this. Do you have a decent relationship with her children? And if, if so, why do you, if not, what do you believe the problem is? I don't, I, I have a, uh, I feel like I got a decent rela relationship with her kids. Now, now, now Ms. Mitchell, you say, and a lot of women say this, I'm a package deal. I'm right. a package deal. But what did you do to make that package deliverable? In other words, what did you do to, to foster a relationship between him and the children? Because loving you don't make him automatically right. love your kids, especially if one of your kids is a teen, because teen, you know, I, you know when my kids were teenagers. <laughs> Right, right. You, you hardly love them when you're birthed right. them because they, they've had <laughs> much trouble. Right. So what did you do to foster a positive relationship and make it easier for the both of them to get it together? I pretty much always have to play the middle person. I Sometimes my husband doesn't know how to deliver his messages. But here's what I'm saying. This is just the general message I want to put out there. Okay. When people with kids marry a person with not kids, they get annoyed that, that that person doesn't know how to talk to the kids. But why would they? Right. Why would they? It's your job to sit down and say, look, I got, I got little Johnny B. Johnny B's a bit of a hardhead, blah, 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 blah. Maybe you two should go play video games and just talk and blah, blah, blah. Then I got little Sally C. Sally C over here, she's not really sure about you. So that's your job. That's what I had done. That's what I told him. I said, talk to her. It's, it's not. No, that's not what I just said. Right. That's not what right. I just said. What I just say? <laughs> it's my job. Yeah, it's my now, job. You it's said to, talk to, to her. deliver it to That's him. That's not what I was saying. Right. You talk to him about each one of them, break them down, explain them, and then give them an idea of what they ought to do together in order to create a relationship. That's what, well, I didn't say that in that sense, but that's what I've done before. Do you think she helped you sufficiently when you first got in the house to acclimate to all of these people? No. You set him up for failure when you did, I did. that. I did. Because your kids don't know him. Right. They don't love him. Right. They have no reason to trust him or like him. All you did was let this dude in the house, like an occupying force, right. and let them just, and you said, oh, not my problem anymore. Right. You discipline these people you don't even know and love. When I first got in, she didn't really, I fell back. Cause I didn't feel like it was my job to be like interacting with them as much as possible. So I kind of like was reserved. But 
she need to be more firm on a lot of stuff, just like me, but I just don't cross too many lines because... I don't have time for the people getting involved, so I tried to do something differently because my attitude... Is it is, working? Is it, it is working. He just... He like things the way he want things to be done. That's it. He I'm like... Joe Jackson, she mm -hmm. Catherine Jackson. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I, I, like... I understand. Mr. J Jenkins, I will say this. I mean, when they're teenagers, they do dumb stuff, and I know it's extra hurtful when you're like, you step in and go beyond, above and beyond for kids that aren't yours, right. but you can't take that personally. Teenagers are just weird. What do you say is the main problem in your relationship with him? Aside speaking, though, to piggyback off of what he said about our kids, something... I just don't like how he do... Well, not just the kids, just us, period. Anything that he do for us, he talks about it. He uh -huh. talks about the bathroom. I understand that. To me, my response to the writing on the wall was the same, pretty much piggybacking off of what you said as well. Kids are going to be kids. You, you've never been around this many kids. So this is what they do. They're all different. They all do, and, and you have to just... I don't know how to put it in words. I don't well, what know do you to... say he's doing incorrectly? What, what, what are you... What's causing the tension here? First of all, I didn't know he had this many issues with the children. I thought that we had talked about it and it was... We had moved past it. I thought that his issues was with my parents and skills. I'm not gonna even lie. Mm -hmm. I just thought that that's where his issue was at. He felt like I should have been a little bit more... Uh, firm with them. He felt like I felt I should just beat the crap out of them every time they no, do something no. or whatever have you. That's no. why I thought the issue was. Did you, did you guys ever have the discipline conversation? How are we gonna roll, run this boat? No. No. We well, need to. But, but you know, even, you know, step parent or not stop, right. step parent, y'all need to have a conversation about what, what the rules are and how you're going to enforce them. I believe that when he had come in, I've always been the person, even when I was married previously for eight years, I felt like I had the opportunity to, like, relax and have a man in the house. So that's why I stopped being a disciplinarian and I had given him the baton. So... But I didn't Ms. know. Mitchell, that was a mistake, and let right. me tell you why. Okay. You set him up for failure when you did, I did. that. I did. Because your kids don't know him. Right. They don't love him. Right. They have no reason to trust him or like him. All you did was let this dude in the house, like an occupying force, right. and let them just... And you said, oh, not my problem anymore. Right. You discipline these people you don't even know and love and, and, and let them... That's... You're the disciplinarian. Right. Until he's becomes f comes daddy. Did you throw the bottle of soda at him? I didn't know I was pregnant. So I wasn't I feeling didn't. good. Yeah. I've been pregnant too and I ain't never thrown nothing at nobody. <laughs> I was just don't pull that out. Right. Don't, right. don't say I was pregnant. That right. takes all women down with you. You say you don't get the respect you deserve. Tell me why you feel that way. At times, it's her attitude. Like, her attitude can just be, like... Give me an example. Give me a good story. All right. Um, for an example, Christmas Day, right? My youngest son, I had a... Well, it was her ginger ale soda, right? It, it was, was who? Ginger ale? Okay. Ginger ale uh -huh. was in the re refrigerator. And I popped it, poured something for my... The two-year-old on Christmas Day, right? I give it to him. I'm like, go play, woo-woo. I go downstairs, I'm sweeping, I'm cleaning up. She come downstairs, she asked me, did you uh, pop this ginger ale bottle? I'm like, yeah, I gave it to little man, right? She threw the whole bottle at me. Like, threw the whole... She did? Whole ginger ale bottle at me, right? So, of course, I ducked by we turned Bye. into the Matrix, did all that for her. And I'm like, I ain't know it was that deep that you would throw a bottle of did soda at me. Did you throw the bottle of soda at him? I didn't know I was pregnant, so I wasn't feeling I good. Either. Yeah. I've been pregnant, too, and I ain't never thrown nothing at nobody. <laughs> yeah. I was just don't mad. pull that out. Right. Don't, right. don't say I was pregnant. That right. takes all women down with you. You know what I mean? I'm going to act a fool because, I, you know, you know, hormones make you crazy yeah, and all that kind of stuff. I didn't know I was pregnant. I wasn't feeling good. I'm just probably over the fact that I'm tired of my stuff getting eaten or drank or whatever have you. So that's what but made you, me But you got it. five kids, so your stuff getting eaten and, 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 eaten dr and drunk all the time. You don't have nothing. It wasn't Nothing. like that until he came in the house and started giving it all out. They used to listen. 
Yeah. Well, but, 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 again, setting up the brother for failure. He's trying to get in good with the kids, ingratiate himself, and be be popular and all this kind of stuff. You 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 cutting his left arm off and then tying the right one behind his back. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And then when he's all like that, you threw a bottle at him. <laughs> and turned him into the Matrix. Yeah, and turned right. him into the Matrix. You say he gambles. And that money that should go in the house is going out the door. Explain that to me. I gave Devonte over twelve hundred dollars mm -hmm. to take care of whatever bills that he needed to take care of. He ended up pawning the money. Well, before he got, he got the money, I'm thinking he going to go and take care of the bills and things of that nature. He took that money and gambled with it, and ended up going behind my back and pawning a title to our car. I had no idea he had done that. So he... Pawning the title to your car? Yeah, he pawned the title to our car to get cash. He gambled that money. He won. I don't know what's his deal with the gambling, but he ended up getting up over, like, $8,000 because he showed me. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm not gonna get mad at you for going to the casino or whatever have you. So, with that being said, in our neighborhood, they was doing uh, paintballers. He supplied the whole entire neighborhood with paintball guns, the air tank, and everything. And I'm like, okay, you gonna pay the bills? He said, yeah, I got you, I got you. So when he got with me, he told me his money was our money and my money was my money. So I said, oh, okay, so no, I could... No, no, no. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. That's not what I yes, said. Yes, you did. I said, your money is your money, my money is your money. That, That's it's it. It's the same thing I just no, said. Right. No, no. No. Anyway, That's so he blew the money. money. Mm -hmm. He blew the money on the bill, so I ended up had to, having to take care of us. When he came back, he had just the right of, right of money for the rent. And he was mad when we was SOL. I had stopped working in corporate America to go to school. And so I was relying on him to go ahead and supply uh, and take care of us. So when he blew our money, I was I was pissed. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Mr. Jenkins, first of all, you know, doing that to go gamble, I can't recommend it. I mean, you know, you just happened to win that day, but usually the house takes you. Mm -hmm. So you should take care of your house before that house takes your money. Right. But the question I have for you is. Why did you spend the eight? I can understand having some fun with the money that mm -hmm. you won, but why didn't you hold enough back to make sure that the house was secure? I always wanted to paintball and stuff with the neighbor. Wanted to have some fun. It was a little fun. I think I topped out, but that's bull crap. What? 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 What, what, what do you? What? What? what what's your response? Why He's is talking it about he was childish. Around that same time, I had set up a date for us to go uh, oh. laser tagging. He was like. Well, what about the kids? Some like they're fine. They doing whatever they need to do for it's teenagers. One want to stay in the house to play games. One want to go out with their friends. Let them do whatever they need to do. This is a day for us. The reason why I have an attitude is the fact that we don't have sex often. Miss oh. Mitchell. You got a good man here, and you making some mistakes. Yeah. It's a big deal to take on somebody else's kids, and you can't just say it was a package deal. It's more than a package deal. It's a lifetime of commitment. It's a difficult thing to do. I did it with four kids. Didn't do a good job of it either. But I'm telling you, it, 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 is, it is stressful, and it strains you, and you, you used to be about you, and then now you about six other people that you have to deal with first, and kids come first. It's a lot of sacrifice, and it's a lot of change, and you need to be nurturing about that, just not saying, well, he knew he was what he was getting into. You would have said, I'm glad this brother got into this with me. Let me make it as easy as possible. Let me be the disciplinarian so he can foster a positive and loving relationship. Let me be over the top with the thank yous and I love yous and, and, and you're doing a good job with this because that is a very, very, very hard thing to do. He doesn't love your kids when he meets them. Just doesn't. He can fall in love with them. You can help him fall in love with them, but not by leaving him with the d disciplinarian part. That's your job. Mr. Jenkins, I, I can't fuss at you too much. But what I do have to say is this. Women need to be paid attention to, loved, and cared for. Yes. Especially a woman with a whole lot of kids. You cannot forget to be her lover while you're being a step, the father to her children. You just can't. You'll love it much more 
if you love her a little softer. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's Don't right. tag her with her children's wrongs. Get, get together and tag team them with your strength and your ability and your knowledge. <laughs> but you're the heavy hand, not him. They're not ready for that from him yet. Do you understand what yes. I'm telling you? Yes. I want you two to do well. I love you. <laughs> and I love you. <laughs> I do. You're a Thank good you. woman. But everybody work on your own sin. Both of you have enough of it. And if everybody works on your own sin, the home becomes sinless because everybody's taking care of their own house. You with me? Yes. Best of luck to both of you. Honest to God, nobody's getting nothing because I know y'all love each other and gonna stay together. This matter is adjourned. We like you guys. I can't get over how cute this baby is. Judge Lynn had a lot to say today. Uh, what's your reaction? I felt like I didn't get a chance to say much about how he is <coughs> as a person, but it's okay. I love her response. Well, what, what are we missing? This guy looks like a pretty decent dude to me. <laughs> he got a, he's hot-headed as well. <laughs> he's hot-headed as well. Do you well. think uh, Judge Lynn got through to her? Because we did hear a little bit of that attitude come out of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You think Judge Lynn got through to her today? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Hopefully couple months from now, things will be better. Yeah. Nice. You guys got a little army at, at home. Can you yeah. uh, be more of a disciplinarian now? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, I recently just started, because he did express it to me just a little bit. But yeah, I definitely can. Judge today's case, love or money. She's got Facebook feuds and $700 shoes, but what she really wants is a wedding ring. Let's see why she can't get down the aisle. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Daniel Greathouse and Kenidra Love. The two of you have been together for 10 years and you have four children together. You would like to get married already. Mr. Greathouse is not so sure. So you've come to me on a before your vows. You've given me your marriage license with permission to tear it up. Should I think your union is ill-advised and you've also completed my compatibility test. Mr. Greathouse, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me why you love her, but you're not so sure marriage is a good idea? Your Honor, she wants me to put a ring on it, but I can't marry a woman who spends up all our money. Oh. <laughs> now, give me some examples of some ex extravagant spending that she's done. Well, just last month, um, she spent $700 on some Balenciaga sneakers. Um, <laughs> you spent $700 on some sneakers? Yes, I did, Your Honor. <laughs> and then Do you have $700 speak? Sneaker money? Yes. Oh, that was not convincing. <laughs> Mr. Greathouse, go ahead. Again, a few weeks ago, she asked me to get her some hair weave. Uh-huh. And I told her, you know, wait until my next, uh, you know, wait until my next check and I'll get it for her. Um, I'm at work, um, I go into the break room, I check my account, and it was money spent off of my car. And that was for the hair weave. He do the same thing. Like, he'll take my car, and order things too. So it's like we do it to one another. But did you, did you know he wanted you to wait till he got his next check? No. So at the end of any given month, how much do you put in your savings account? Um. Don't lie. <laughs> Nothing. That would be a big fat zero, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you don't have any savings at the end of the month, you can't have $700 shoes. But anyway, so Mr. Greathouse, do you have any other experiences you want to share with me that gives you concern about the way she manages money? Like, she's just careless with money. Like, as far as, like, you know, we have, like, you know, bills, like cell phone bills, um, rent. We have the, you know, kids and... You and know, at the time, our, our bills was paid off. No, that's yes, not, that's, it was. That's that's not true. true. It but was. she ordered a $150 dress and she hid it. I have a video of what she spent okay. um, within the past Let's month. Let's take a look. 
Now this is one month's worth. Yes. She had went out and um, got purses, like little purses. She bought my daughter some expensive sneakers for wow. school, back to school, an iPhone. Oh. Um, and then, <laughs> <laughs> then um, this, this ugly dress. <laughs> That's a dress? I didn't like the picture. What did you say? I ordered the dress. Yeah. And I didn't like the dress, so I wanted to return it. Do you two have arguments about money? Yes, we do. He Give me some stories of extravagant spending on his he part. He would spend his money on cigarettes <laughs> all the time. You got $700 sneakers. What you complaining <laughs> about some cigarettes for? He buys cigarettes every day. Huh? He buys cigarettes every day. It's like two packs a day. Cigarettes in our I city is not... It, and I can afford it, too. And the cigarettes is not cheap. No, they're not. Yeah. And he buys them every day. But like he buys them every day. Two, three packs a day. Yes. I'm just going to give you my standard 101 PSA speech about, about, about cigarettes. You are paying a large conglomerate hard-earned money to kill you slowly over time. Exactly. Don't do it. <laughs> what other extravagant things does he do? Because so far, it's just you. He spends his money, too, on the shoes a lot. Uh-huh. A lot. But, I mean, you know, do your kids have college funds ready to go? No. I don't know. I'm starting them. Yeah, you, 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 you look really good walking past college. <laughs> in nice <laughs> shoes. <laughs> but can't get in because no, you ain't right. got no money. Right. <laughs> you say she has terrible trust issues. Explain that to me. Oh, it's horrible. I could be at work and, you know, I have AirPods. Um, you know, for the iPhone. And I could be, like, on the phone with her, and mid-conversation, someone would stop me at work and, you know, want to talk, like, you know, say, ask me questions or anything. She'll be like, oh, who is that you're on the phone with? Um, just starting with me. No. Over... No, yes. it's not, no. Who, like, oh, who are you talking okay. to? Why are you talking to them? Da 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 you, Oh, you giving her mad attention? You showing her all this attention? But I'm at work. Right. Like, so... <laughs> so you trying to no, get work done. Nah. Exactly. <laughs> trying I'm, to pay for them snakes. E exactly. I'm... I'm <laughs> exactly. Ms. Love, look, why don't you tell me, do you, do you not trust him? And if so, why not? I don't trust him because one night we were in bed watching TV. Yeah. And his phone went off. Uh -huh. He popped up so quick and went in the next room and answered his phone. So I was, tr I'm trying to figure out why. You know, he said it was a coworker. It wasn't a co worker. He didn't want to interrupt the movie. That's why he walked out. That's why he that's walked out. That's that's he, he was trying to be polite, was his, was his explanation. Give me yes. something else. What other things have caused you to mistrust him? Um, one day I went through his phone, see him text texting some girl. And what was he saying? When they, he was saying, like, when they're going to meet up. When are they gonna meet up? Where are they gonna meet up at? Mr. Great Out. In the time. Did and... that occur? I mean, she did see messages. <laughs> yes, but I did. It wasn't. It wasn't nothing. <laughs> well, what was it? It was nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it was nothing. Mm. I mean, <laughs> it was. It, it was something like you know, as far as like conversation, but nothing ever happened. So it was an inappropriate conversation. Yes, it, it, it was yes, one that you would not have shared with her voluntarily. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You understand, yeah. You understand, you understand how that goes, though, right? You start doing that kind of thing, uh -huh. and then, oh, let's drive by. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, let's shop for a drink. Oh, yeah, exactly. next no. thing you know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, this is a before your vow, so I know what the problems are. Why don't you tell me why you would even consider marrying one another? You say she's over the top. Mm-hmm. Talk, talk about what happened on vacation. Well, we was on a vacation, and, you know, when, you know, when you're on a vacation, you, you know, mingle with other people and stuff like that. So we were mingling with people, and, you know, it was this one girl, she, like, kept staring at me, you know, giving me a lot of attention. So from there, like, I was getting, I started getting text messages. You, she started sending me messages. You was, you was like, oh, um, you know, when we leave here, oh, we're done. Um, just, like, you know, just being nasty. He messages. liked that type of attention. Well, he likes what kind of attention? From other females. Like, he, he's too friendly sometimes. Uh-huh. And he was all in her face. 
Was that don't, true? Don't were you inappropriately close? Were you, you know, all doing a little yes. fun? No. Being a, Did yes. you enjoy yes. her no, attention? we were all mingling. I mean, we were drinking, you know, yeah, and laughing and time. talking. Yeah, we My were on point vacation. Is that when he drank, he get a little too friendly sometimes. Mm-hmm. And like, so, yes. were you, were you, were you rude and ludicrous in no, your text? No, no, no. No, it, well, yes. in the text, yes, yes. But I'm not going to do it in front of people and all, yes. you know. Yes, this stuff that I can't yes. even say on here. Please. Just that, yes. It, she was nasty. It, just raw nasty. I wasn't nasty. that nasty. Yeah. No, I was not. You weren't raw and nasty? But at least I wasn't doing it in front of everybody. <laughs> so you were raw and nasty, just not in front of everybody. Yeah. I mean, just, I wasn't, not too much, not too bad. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Well, this is a before your vows, so I know what the problems are. Why don't you tell me why you would even consider marrying one another? Other than the fact you have four children together, which is a big reason. Um, but Mr. Great House, you got 30 seconds to give me your best why I love Ms. Love speech. Well, I love her because, you know, we started from the beginning together. Like, as far as, like, fresh out of high school, we were high school sweethearts. Um, yeah. she gave me my first child, like, which was amazing. Like, and then after that, you know, we just kept having them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. but I just loved the woman that she become. Um, and I love the fact that, you know, she's willing to grow with me. Like, and... Well done. <laughs> <laughs> done, Mr. Great House. Now, Ms. Love, you set a high standard there. Yeah. High bar to meet. You got 30 seconds to tell me why Mr. Great House is a great house. Um, okay. <laughs> he's a great house because he, he came a long way from when we were younger. Um, I feel like he's a great man. He takes very care of his, you know, great care of his responsibilities. He's a great father. And even though I have trust issues sometimes, he treats me great. He do. I just love him for that. Well, you did okay. Yeah, I asked you the list five things that are wrong with your intended. And one of them was a one word answer with a whole bunch of exclamation points. And you know which one that was? Now, I was oh, yeah. looking at your compatibility test. Mm -hmm. And the thing that stuck out with me, I asked you, the list five things that are wrong with your intended. And one of them was a one word answer with a whole bunch of exclamation points. And you know which one that was? What? Facebook. Yes. What's happening on social media that causes you so much distress? Um, it could be just anything. Like, as far <laughs> as like for birthdays or like just anything, not liking a, um, a, a, a post that she posted. Like, right. It, it can just go there. Like, she'll call me, be like, why you didn't like my post on Facebook? <laughs> I'll be like, like yeah, I'll be petty am sometimes. I really supposed to, like, you know, like, be on, like, first, uh, I'm the first one that's supposed to like it? Or, like, say it's her birthday. I can, like, do something extremely nice for her. Right. Like, and she'll be like, oh, why you didn't post on my wall on social media? <laughs> so she'll just get mad because I, I don't post Did you post do on. that? I did that when I was younger. Uh-huh. As far as, like, the, the birthday posts and stuff like that, I don't do that, but I... N no, she still No, because we have, we have this one mutual friend. <laughs> it's his work buddy, and he be liking her statuses, loving her pictures and everything like that. So then when I post something, you don't love mine or like mine. So, yeah, I feel some type of way about that sometimes. I do, because why are you liking her pictures? Or, but no, I loving her pictures. Your Honor, I feel like that's just thinking too hard. No, it's but... not. Because if I did the same thing, he'd be pressing me to calling mm -hmm. me, oh, why are you liking his picture or loving his picture? Because, I, like, me personally, I don't go that deep into social media as far as, like, okay, what is she like? Because I don't like, because I don't media. be doing that. That's why. I got you. I, don't say, I got something to say about that, but <laughs> I got one more thing on your compatibility <laughs> test I want to talk about. You said, I could be upset and drown everyone out, stuck in my own world. Yes. I think I know what that means, but she's, she's nodding in agreement. We're gonna, I'm gonna have you explain to me what that means. It means he could be going through something and like he'll just shut everybody completely out. I try to talk to him and he don't wanna talk to me or he have an attitude, just walk around with an attitude. So I, you know, I'll be walking around feeling uncomfortable sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I don't like feeling like that. Cause it's the great house, is that true? Um, yeah, yes. but I, I feel like we all go through that. Like, where 
you know, you'll be down sometimes. And of course, but you, you don't know, take we're it around on. each other. We, we've been together for close to 11 years now. Right. So us being like, you know, we're, we're we see each other every day. Like, you know, we have four kids. So sometimes, like, you know, it's like it get it get kind of frustrating sometimes. So what's frustrating? Her? The no, kids? No, oh, no, the relationship? No, it's the kids not, too. Because he he would block the kids out too. I'm yelling at them and everything like that. He be stuck in his own little it's world. It's not that. It's you, just like yes. you know where, you know it gets it gets to be a lot sometimes. As far as like with you know the kids running around the house. How do you, you think know? I feel? Of course. I, I mean, uh, we like, all go through it. Like mm -hmm. you know, because she go through the same thing where she'll shut everyone out. Like and she'll feel like no, I, I'm like me and the kids are against her, and we're not. Do you feel that way? Yes. Why do you feel like because he and the kids are against against you? Okay, because I I'm like the the mean mommy. That's what the kids be saying sometimes. Because with with me, I discipline my kids, mm -hmm. and he would go in and be like, "Oh, mommy, mean, right?" Yes. Oh, oh what mommy? It's true. Or he be like, "What mommy did to you? What mommy did?" <laughs> and I don't like that. I'm like, really. You put the oh, you can't do that. Exactly. And, and, do that me, and it's not just to her. You're doing it to your kids. She's disciplining, disciplining the kids, not because it's fun, but because they need that to yes. grow up and to be rational, responsible adults. Mm -hmm. And when you come behind her and tell her the problem is mom's being mean as opposed to you did the wrong thing, you're inviting them not to understand what's going on. You're inviting them to mess up. Right. You're inviting them not to respect her. Right. You can't do that, and they're going to get bigger than her one day. The most important thing my <laughs> husband ever did for me, because we had nothing but boys, was... He drilled on them about the respect thing. So when they got all that testosterone and got crazy <laughs> and got big, they, you know, they five foot ten. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they do everything I say the moment I say it because my husband was like on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He had right. to do that for me. Mm -hmm. On it. You obey your mother. I don't care what she said. One time was my favorite story, then I'm gonna stop. <laughs> One time, my 11-year-old, I wanted my 11-year-old to go somewhere with me. And he kept asking, well, where are you going? Well, where are you going? And my husband just walked through the room and said, I don't care if your mother's going to hell, you're going with her. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of attitude you need to have about this sucker. You with me on that one? I mean, one? I, I always, like, you know, have the kids show her respect, though. I do. Like, it's just sometimes she could be a little over the top. Then you talk to her about that in a room, away yes, from Yes, not around the kids. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Yes, it does. Why doesn't that work? Because, like, it'll, it'll, it'll go... It'll be more than what it has to be. Like, as far as, like, sometimes, like, we can have, um, like, conversations, like, but when it's, like, about, like, you know, something with her, like, she will go to the extent of saying that, like, I'm bashing her, or I'm trying to like Sometimes. down her, but I'm not. I'm. Can I, you not take criticism? She can't. I can. I can. Some depends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say this, and then I'm gonna finish up. I might be reaching for it here, but I think I see over there a person who really doesn't understand her own value. If it's hard for you to take criticism and you feel the need to have $700 shoes and a whole bunch of weave in your hair and, and, and then you, you don't like how he talks to other people, I don't think you feel secure. I do. I I, no, no, <laughs> no, no. I want you to think about it. I want you to think about it for a moment. Does what you do say to, say to the world, I'm a secure person? If you were secure, you wouldn't care about the posts and the like. He, he liked hers, but he didn't like mine. All of those things, though they're, they're disparate, though they're all over the world, they speak of insecurity. Right. And I want you to think about, you have value. You're a beautiful woman, Thank Woman you. got a good dude, you got four kids, right. you've been together for a long time. You have to understand and respect you for who you are and what you are. And you know, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And, and I just want to say one thing, too. Sure. I just go, like, just, you know, I do spend my money 
you know, but I don't just like splurge on everything. I just, it was a gift to myself because I do a lot. I really do. I have four kids and everything like that. I take very good care of my kids. So. Oh, I'm not saying you're no, a bad no, mother saying, so at just, all. You know, I'm so not saying I'm like, you're a bad mother at all. So I just got a gift, you know, and I don't always just spend my money on weave either. She's an excellent mother. Yeah, oh, I, I, and I never said she wasn't a good mm -hmm. mother. I right. said I'm worried about her sense of security. Right, I know. You know one thing would make her feel really secure? <laughs> if you went on and married her. <laughs> Take this marriage license. Right. <laughs> this matter is adjourned.